I want to solve a quick example that demonstrates what we have done so far. Um, so in the case of mean stresses, we try to calculate a equivalent completely reversed stress, alternating stress, and predict life to fatigue failure still based on the Baskin equation. That's why Baskin equation is so important. We have to understand what it means and how to use it. And once we understand, always our strategy will be to somehow fall back onto the Baskin equation. So now in this example, we have a certain type of material. And once that material is given, well, we can go to the tables in the book and extract the relevant material data. In this case, sigma f prime and b values that appear in the Baskin equation are found to be as such. And we're given this problem where sigma m is equal to 200 MPa. And the value of the alternating stress is 450 MPa. And the question is, what is the number of cycles to failure? Okay. Now, given that question, if we know of, uh, if we know or and follow the discussions that we have so far, what we should remember uh, are the two relations. The first one is the Morrow relation, and the second one is SWT. We should be able to feel comfortable using them. Now, let's start with the Merrill uh, relation. And really, there isn't much we need to really memorize. Uh, if sigma A is equal to sigma AR, then we get failure. If there is mean stress alone, when it reaches a critical value, then again we get failure. And the critical value in Merrill is the one that already appears in the Baskin equation, so it's sigma F prime. And now if I want to combine the two fx, I just sum them. So that is the Merrill equation. So in this case, sigma M, is already given, sigma f prime is given, sigma a is given, which means I can directly solve for sigma a r. So that is our equivalent completely reverse stress amplitude. Again, why equivalent? Because physically the loading is not completely reverse. I'm just mapping it to a completely reverse value. And that value is, as you will notice, larger than sigma a because the equivalent completely reverse has zero mean. So you can apply a larger stress amplitude to achieve the same cycle. So this case is equivalent to that case in the sense that they are both going to achieve the same number of cycles to failure. How do I predict that value? Well, the Baskin equation is always valid. So this is equal to sigma f prime to nf to the power b. And here I know again sigma f prime and b and so I can solve for nf and find that it's equal to 166,000 cycles. Okay, so that is the relation, that's the um, solution based on Merrill relation. The second equation, the second approach, let's take um, SWT. Okay, now this one is a bit harder to remember, of course, but remember there is going to be a sigma max, which is some of the mean and, and the alternating stress, so that's 650 MPa, and SWT just realizes that somehow we take sigma A and sigma M and map them to a sigma AR value. In this case, that map is going to be simply square root sigma max sigma A. Okay, So such that if sigma max is equal to sigma A, okay, if sigma M is equal to 0, the outcome is again sigma A. Sigma AR is equal to sigma A. Now, but in this case, it's not 0. And still the map works. That's the idea of SWT. And we can go ahead and calculate that value, and you can find that to be 540.8 MPa. Again, notice that it's larger than this value of 450 for the same reason as this was larger. Um, and now, with this equivalent completely reverse stress amplitude, I can predict the number of cycles to failure. How? Again, the Baskin equation still holds. The Baskin equation predicts this relation. And then you can again go ahead and solve for number of cycles to failure, which is going to be 86,900 cycles. Um, now, now that we have a comparison of these two different models, um, we can ask ourselves, well, first of all, which one shall I use? Well, whatever is eventually suggested if you have a reference. So we already know that this is a bit more suitable for steels, this one a bit more suitable for aluminum, but 
it turns out both can be used if suitable for the same situation uh, in this case for steel now however the outcomes may not be as predictive at first sight so in particular here this one is twice as large as that one or I might ask myself well um, which one is the correct one what shall I be designing towards now first of all these do indeed look quite different right so these are quite um, different um, but already they give a good idea that number of cycles to failure is not ten hundred thousand so not ten hundred thousand but ten or hundred or thousand uh, and it's not million or ten million but somewhere that is in the vicinity of hundred thousand so NF is of the order of 10 to the 5. Okay, so both models predict the same thing. Number of cycles to failure is about 10 to the 5. So if you wanted to learn if you could go up to a million cycles, the answer is certainly no. If you wanted to see if you could apply at least a thousand cycles, the answer is probably yes, you can. So both of them are able to predict the same order of magnitude. Moreover, note that eventually we plot life on a log scale. And on a log scale, actually these two numbers on a log scale that ranges from, let's say, 10 to the 1 to 10 to the 7, actually they're two close numbers. So they're not all that different from each other. So one would say eventually that these two models, although they are um, quite different, they give both a reasonable estimate such that such a complex phenomena is actually predicted to a accuracy that is reasonably close with respect to at least one another. Of course, you always want a good model, a model that is very accurate. So if the number of cycles is 150,000 cycles, for instance, in reality, I know that this is a better model than that one. Or if number of cycles is actually 90,000, I know that this is a better model than that one. But still, both are good models in the sense that they are able to predict the order of magnitude quite well, at least for this scenario. So uh, in that sense, uh, both of them are useful uh, approaches to um, high cycle fatigue in the context of this, uh, of, of this goal of characterizing the influence of mean stress. Okay, so now that we have an idea to handle the mean stress effect, let us look at the remaining items in our list of generalizing the basic Basquiner relation.